Welcome back everybody. This is Steve and today we're going to play around with the toy box antenna system from Comet. A little bit harder than we did last time. Last time I did not have an antenna tuner and I couldn't get a good match. This time I brought an antenna tuner and a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's spin the camera around and see what we're working with today. All right, so I got a whole box of parts sitting over there that I'm going to play with. I've got a couple of different radios. Maybe we'll have some fun once we get this thing tuned up. Maybe getting tuned up is all the fun that we're going to have today. Who knows? I have the trusty MFJ259 tuner with the KD9 POK battery pack. This is two 18650s into the uh, right power connector for that, the right DC barrel jack. I've got the 705 with the wind camp stand, which is acting as the antenna holder. And if you look... I got this thing strapped down to the table because I don't want it flying away, falling over, doing anything. I've got a tape measure. I've got some coax in case, you know, you always need coax. But what I'm doing right here is I have the antenna screwed into the PL259 on the wind camp mount, which then comes out of this. I think this is RG316 uh, coax right here into a couple of adapters, into a piece of RG, I think this is 8, RG58. Um, into the antenna tuner and uh, we're trying to figure it out and right now I'm looking at the 160 meter band and I'm not having any luck I got to measure out the counterpoise that I have I've got some DX commander wire my favorite wire running off way in the distance over there for counterpoise let's take a look at where we're at on the antenna tuner we're gonna be able to see this all right so we're at two to one. And that's the best I've been able to get so far. Maybe down to the 1.7 territory, but two to one at 18100. Not good, not bad. I'm gonna see what I'm gonna see how long that counterpoise is, but that might mean that 160's out. So another thing that I've got going on in order to make sure that this works is I have a little cheat sheet that I wrote up. So for 160, I need the base plus the three and a half, the 3.5 megahertz coil, the 1.8 megahertz coil. The whip needs to be set at 46 and the counterpoise needs to be 131 feet. 131 feet of counterpoise. That's crazy for a portable antenna. I don't think I have 131 feet. Let me check my measurements, see what I have, and we'll take some notes. Hang on. Okay, so next up is the switch over to the 80 meter band. We need the base plus three and a half, so I have removed the 160 coil. I need 36 inches on the whip, which I have changed, and I did it all down here, so that's what 36 inches looks like. Um, well, that's <laughs> that's what you want to collapse. So I collapsed the first, uh, the first couple of sections, and then just about an inch on the third, fourth section there. And then I need 66 feet of counterpoise focus there we go 66 feet of counterpoise so what i did was i wound up the end let's take a walk out there i wound up the end of the counterpoise wire onto the winder kind of the same way you would fold back the end of an antenna wire on itself and so we are wound back on the end of the winder there let's take a look and see what it looks like on the antenna analyzer All right, so we're looking at 3.5 to 4. Let's get this thing into the 3.5 range. So we're starting to go down a bit. It's a little bit of a dip there. All right, what do you guys think? Shorter or longer on the counterpoise? All right, after lots of trial and error, this is the best I can get. We're at 30 feet of counterpoise. And if we look at the antenna analyzer, focus. Now oh, the wind's blowing. Best I can get is maybe 1.6. Let's see how the radio thinks that works. All right, so we're at the same frequency on the radio as we were on the antenna analyzer. And you can see that it's not terribly happy 
And the closer I get into the field of the antenna, the happier it gets. So I'm still not convinced of this on uh, 80 meters, but I'm gonna write down these measurements and we will keep on moving forward. All right, so for the toy box measurement, we need 38 inches. So again, I've still got the first three compressed and then about four inches on the next one and the rest is fully extended up. So it's as tall as my silo. No, it's uh, 38 inches for the whip and then we only need the base. None of the two coils are installed. 39 inches is what we're supposed to need on the focus. It's what we're supposed to need on the counterpoise. We're still at 30, 39 inches, 30 feet from last time. Let's see what that looks like on the antenna analyzer. So I need to switch this over to seven megahertz range. And it's the same thing. So we need to go shorter again. Let's try going shorter. All right, so I did the binary sort method and I cut it in half. I went from 30 feet down to 14 feet and I'm actually pretty happy with the results of that. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to get any better at all. So focus, focus on something. So I can get that down to almost 1.5 at seven, almost seven even. So let's plug this into the radio and see what the radio thinks. How does the radio feel about this? 2.5, and if I get close into the field of the antenna, we're at two. So not terribly happy with that. All right, so we've switched over to 30 megahertz. And in switching over to 30 megahertz, I don't know how the lighting is on this. I haven't changed the counterpoise. We're still at 14 feet on counterpoise, and we are off the charts there. But if I get back in, we're at 1.5. I don't really like having to stick my hand near the antenna when I'm transmitting. That just seems like a real big pain in the butt. I'm gonna try some other bands, take some other notes. We'll circle back at the end. Unpopular opinion time? I don't know, popular opinion time? I watched a couple of other videos here on the YouTubes and a lot of people are using this antenna but not sharing how difficult it is to configure and set up. I bought this antenna with my own money. I'm not worried about hurting anybody's feelings. This antenna is very difficult to set up in the field compared to many other kinds of antennas that are out there. Uh, many, many better kinds of antennas that are out there. For example, the DX Commander, and I'm a big fan of Cal, I will totally admit that. I'm not a big fan of taking the DX Commander portable, but a lot of people do it, and I have no problem doing it myself if I'm gonna be out for the entire day. Um, the DX Commander is easier to set up, it's a lot more, physically complicated, but not fiddly complicated because you do all the fiddling stuff up front in your nice cozy shack or wherever it is you happen to care to assemble that antenna. This one you do all the fiddly stuff outdoors and you're relying on a lot of different pieces of nature to be there. Would this have worked better with an elevated counterpoise? Probably. Do I have anything to attach an elevated counterpoise to that I can guarantee is 131 feet away from my operating station? Don't know. Am I carrying 131 feet of spare counterpoise wire with me in addition to the antenna? No. All right, so we move from 160, which is not really practical for operating in the field during the daytime. We move down to 80, 66 feet of counterpoise wire. Yeah, I can carry 66 feet of counterpoise wire. I've got 66 feet of horizontally strung counterpoise wire in a park somewhere and I'm now operating and worried about whether somebody's gonna trip over it or not. That's, that's you know, 66 feet from me to the end of that wire, from the operating position to the end of that wire is a long way to go. So, like everything just compounds. You get down to 20, it worked great on 20. 1.5 to one on 20. Um, but why bother with this antenna? 14 feet of counterpoise um, and then 39 inches, so four or five feet of uh, vertical plus the coil. I might as well get a 16-foot piece of wire and run it straight up in the air and a 16-foot piece of counterpoise and run it straight out ag across the ground horizontally. Heck, for that matter, let's do four in a nice star pattern. Let's do a nice, real simple vertical, like the, like the QRP guy's vertical antenna that I've been using, which all I have to do is 
throw a, a rope up in a tree and haul it up and spread out my radios and I'm done. And I'm on a tuned antenna and ready to roll. So this is not the right solution. If you disagree with me, this antenna is for sale. Send me a message, I'm good on QRZ. And uh, we can talk about it in the, uh, in the conversation that we have on selling this thing. Um, it's probably gonna, probably gonna move fast. So move fast if you're interested in it. Thanks for being awesome. We'll see you in the next one with a better antenna.